Welcome to this time of worship with Leaside United Church. On behalf of the Affirming Team, I am so pleased to share this time with you as we celebrate five years since becoming an Affirming Congregation. Being an Affirming Congregation means that we do not assume anyone who comes through our church doors or finds our YouTube services knows that all are welcome. Instead, we commit to expressing this belief clearly. God loves you. God loves all people, not despite of who we are, but because of all the things that make us unique. We light the Christ candle, the candle of peace, as a reminder of God's unconditional, radical, and abundant love, present in every moment. Hallelujah. It is with God's love and presence that our mission is possible. The mission of Leaside United Church is to grow a caring and vibrant spiritual community that embodies God's unconditional love, following the teachings of Jesus, and takes responsibility for being co-creators of a world that works for us all. As an affirming ministry, we celebrate the diversity of God's creation. We celebrate the richness of our community when we have diversity in age, gender identity, racial, cultural backgrounds, sexual orientations, ability, and family configurations. We seek to create a safer place with an open invitation to bring every aspect of one's whole self into one's participation within this ministry. So wherever you are in your faith journey, with whatever questions you carry, you are welcome here whomever you love, whatever your gender identity, your sexual orientation, your ethnicity, race, or ability, you are welcome here. Here where I am right now is on the land for thousands of years has been the meeting place of many indigenous peoples. 
The church building is on land part of the Toronto Purchase Treaty of 1787. Treaty 13 of 1805 with the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Williams Treaties of 1923. We are all treaty people living on treaty land. And so we are engaged in learning and working towards right relations. In the spirit of learning, in the spirit of hope, in the spirit of love, let us join together in prayer. Creator God, you delighted when you crafted us. When you brought us into being, you were explicit in your love. You gifted, you gifted us, us with, with differences, differences that, that illuminate, illuminate the, the rainbow. rainbow. Open us to your word. All, All are, are welcome, welcome here. here. Open us to the embrace of community and sustain our public welcome to people of every race, people of every orientation, people of every economic status, people of every gender identity. All, All are, are welcome, welcome here. here. Open us to your presence in people of all ages and abilities. All, all are, are welcome, welcome here. here. Open us to the beauty of truth and intentionally calling out homophobia, calling out transphobia, calling out racism, calling out ableism. All, all are, are welcome, welcome here. here. Open our hearts and our lives to the joy of new life. All, All are, are welcome, welcome here. here. We add to this prayer the prayer that Jesus taught so long ago, which has been shared in so many different languages and ways. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. A hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. The bread we need for today feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead. Glory. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead. Glory. Alleluia. Christ Jesus is risen from Christ the dead. Risen. Glory. Glory. Alleluia. Christ Jesus is risen from Christ the dead. Risen. Glory. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead. 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 Glory. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen. Glory. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen. Glory. Alleluia. Pay attention to these words from Scripture. 
We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a sibling in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. You might have been wondering this past year how we can love in action, in action and truth, when so many of our actions have been limited. And you might be wondering this Sunday, as we reflect on being an affirming congregation for five years, where our actions are needed and not just our words. You might reflect on how unlikely most of us are to be willing to embrace this idea of laying down our lives for others. When we think of Jesus as the example and his crucifixion and death as an act of love, an act of love born out of caring for the people present with him right then around him, speaking out against the injustice that existed, refusing to be silent when silence would be safer, refusing to be inactive when just going away and doing nothing would be safer. Jesus's death was the result not of a plan, not of a response to a notion of sin, but as the result of actions deeply rooted in love that were counter to the way the powers of the world wanted things to be, but were counter to order and control and hierarchy, and so were a threat. And so Jesus acted out of love, which led to him laying down his life knowingly, because it was the truest way to reveal God's love for us, which cannot be bound by power, which cannot be denied by might, which cannot be divided by all of the arbitrary ways we separate one another in our world then and in our world now. And we wonder what does it mean to talk about laying down our lives? Or perhaps this past year we wonder less because we have laid down our lives again and again in this past year. Ronald Cole Turner writes, we cannot believe in Jesus without believing in love, and we cannot love without action. You see, love was not and perhaps still should not be thought first of as a feeling, but instead as a verb and action. Love matters in its expression, not in its vocalization. So what are some of the actions that you take part in that are an expression of love? Is it a hug or right now is it not hugging? Early on in the pandemic, a number of people in our congregation sewed cloth masks to, to donate to hospital visitors. This was before mask sewing and pattern discussions were commonplace. I was at a, a gathering, a, an extended family gathering over Christmas where most of the discussion was on different mask patterns. Each mask then, was a physical expression of love and an expression of our desire to reach out with that love beyond the maker's individual needs and comforts. And those of us who aren't natural sowers found other acts of love to take part in. You might have been one of the people who immediately started reaching out to others by phone or writing cards to send in the mail. You might have been or you might still be buying and delivering groceries for someone or receiving groceries and meals brought and delivered by others. And all of us in all the ways we've given up on experiences have been laying down our lives for others, acting out of love rather than self-interest. As those in our community and outside of it are vaccinated, but still continue to act with caution, you are acting out of love as well. Remembering that the picture is much bigger than ourselves, that the risks that we take have implications far beyond our own individual health. 
So what are some of the actions that you take part in or some of the actions that you don't take part in that are expressions of love? I've been thinking about how often during this pandemic, our words are an important part of our actions. What have we been saying or not saying? Who are we talking about? What messages and information are we sharing with others? What letters are we writing to politicians and other decision makers? On our affirming anniversary, we remember that the words we speak and the language we choose are a part of our actions, ones that can have very significant implications. This past year, many of us have been paying more attention to our turns of phrase, paying attention to what we need to adjust in our own underlying language and the assumptions beneath that about race, gender, ability, and other ways that we differ from one another. The words that we say shape our thoughts and the thoughts of others. And so as we hear today's scripture, we remember that it is not denying the importance of speech, but underlying how our speech must align with our action. You might be familiar with the concept of microaggressions, questions or expressions that to the person speaking seem insignificant, but to the person hearing them, the person receiving them, are again and again a reminder of ways that hearer is seen as different or set apart and that the experience of the speaker might be that this is a rare occurrence while the experience of the person receiving these words might be that this occurrence happens not just every day but many times a day. Our speech must align with our action. Our speech must be a part of our action. How can we speak of love in the abstract when we ignore it in concrete terms? Last year, I added new organizations to my personal donations, a few related to local and global food security, and also to a couple of organizations providing shelter for those experiencing domestic violence. This pandemic has been inequitable in so many ways and homes have not been safe places for many, especially as supports have been more difficult to access. And pre-pandemic, we heard that almost one in five households in Toronto experienced food insecurity. Over this past year, we've heard about the increasing demands on food banks. The impacts of food insecurity are disproportionately experienced by people who are racialized, people living with differing abilities, and people in the LGBTQ plus and two-spirit communities. When we take action paying attention to food insecurity, we are paying attention to people. We're acting out of love. As a congregation, we've recognized the importance of addressing food insecurity, and you continue to give to the COVID Care Fund which just supported two more organizations this past month. We found other ways to find fun activities that can be opportunities to care for others, such as the virtual variety show, which will be going live tomorrow. But there are so many different ways that we can allow love to be more than words and a part of our actions. As we reflect on five years since first celebrating our commitment to be an affirming congregation, we can't allow this commitment to become nothing more than a few words. Instead, we must practice the ways that this commitment is lived out both in our words and in our actions. Sometimes it's difficult to know where to begin. We can feel like we've done it all or when we look at the hurting and all of the injustice in the world, it can just seem like too much and seem easiest to withdraw to ignore, to lose sight of what is at the center. What is at the center is God's love expressed in Jesus. I've had quite a few days like this over the past year, ones where I'd rather escape or pretend, ones where my words about love or my ideas about love don't line up with what I'm actually saying or doing in any given moment. Times that I've regretted words that I've spoken or words that I haven't extended to another. 
and this might be true for those closest to me or those I know a little and also how I've cared, not cared for those that I don't know, but still matter deeply. I get worn out and I need to remember that caring for myself is a part of caring for others. When we engage in spiritual practices that ground us, that give us space and strength, we are better able to love and serve the world. William L. Self writes, in our own lives, faith is strengthened by practice more than by feeling or by study. Active habits are strengthened by repetition, but passive ones are weakened. During this Easter season, I'm inviting you each week to try a new spiritual practice so that you can find ones that are renewing for you, ones that are meaningful for you, that strengthen your faith, and by that I mean sustain your ability to love and serve others, to love and serve the world. So here's one to try this week. When we're experiencing stress, it's difficult to care for ourselves or others. Grounding techniques provide ways to center ourselves and our bodies and to help us feel connected. This is good for us individually, but it also allows us to then reach out with love towards others without our stress and our anxiety and our worry getting in the way and blocking that. Today's technique is shared by the 519 as part of their emotional self-care resources. If you don't know about it, the 519 is a City of Toronto agency and registered charity committed to the health, happiness, and full participation of the LGBTQ2S communities, which works to meet practical and physical needs, including extensive food programs over this past year, as well as working to promote inclusion, understanding, and respect. So try doing this practice intentionally when experiencing stress, a trigger, or a flashback in order to reconnect to the present moment. List the following silently in your head or verbally and adjust the senses according to your own abilities. Five things you see, four things you hear, three things you feel against your skin, two things you smell, one thing to taste. Let us love because God has loved and still loves beyond any expectation, beyond any measure, beyond anything we can imagine. Amen. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. In the same way, Abba God knows me and I know God. And for these sheep, I will lay down my life. I have other sheep that don't belong to this fold. I must lead them too and they will hear my voice. And then there will be one flock, one shepherd.
Reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. God shares this word. All are welcome here. May these be your words as well. All are welcome here. Be signs of that welcome in all you do and all you are. And remember that God, the creator, source of love, Jesus Christ loves incarnation and the Holy Spirit loves power and promise is with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.